Hi guys, one of the problems that beginner motion designers face is their inability to create smooth and attractive animations. Well, in this video I want to explain four of the most important roles of animation and teach you how to apply them in your work to create smooth and stunning animations, thereby enhancing your level of creativity. Okay, before we dive in, don't forget to like, subscribe and share it with your friends. The first rule is squash and stretch, meaning you should stretch and squash your object relative to the speed, movement and weight of your object. In this example, as you can see, the ball has a squash and a stretch. When it's falling, it stretches, and when it smashes the ground, it squashes, and eventually it gets back to its first shape. But in this one, the ball doesn't squash and stretch anymore. As you can see, squashing and stretching are very effective in making our animation beautiful. This technique can be used in simple objects like these balls and complicated objects like the character's movements and the character's face. As you can see, the character stretches when it's falling and when it's ready to jump, it squashes. In the sample for looking better, when the character's eye closes, the head squashes and when the eye starts to open up, the head stretches. The important point in this role is the volume of the object should be always constant, meaning when the object squashes, it should get broad and wide, and when it stretches, it should get thin and slim. But sometimes to make an animation more appealing, we can do the stretching and squashing with exaggeration, and don't observe the proportion of the volume as you can see in these samples. Well, before moving on to the next rule, if you are interested in animation and motion graphics in After Effects, but you are unsure about the path to becoming a pro motion designer, I highly recommend checking out my Motion Hero course. Ok, the second rule is Anticipation. Meaning, before our character does the main action, show some movement to prepare the audience for the main action. For example, here the character is doing a half leap which is an anticipation, and it wants to show the audience that it's going to jump. When an animation has anticipation, it looks more real, because in reality when someone wants to jump, if he doesn't get ready to jump and doesn't squeeze and constrict his body, he can't jump. So it's better than if you want your animation to look more realistic, you use this rule. This is an animation with anticipation. And this one is without anticipation. And as you can see, the left one is much more beautiful and realistic. Let's see some more samples about anticipation in motion graphics. In this sample, the character before exiting the scene and going down shows anticipation and moves itself up a little, and moves his hands up to get the audience ready for its exit from the scene. And in the next example, as you can see the rabbit for showing anticipation, before any reaction, its head and body moves down and its knees burn so it gets ready the audience for the reaction it's going to do. And as you can see, it's really effective on the animation's beauty. The next rule is follow through and overlapping. This rule helps a lot showing the object movements more real. Follow through means that the secondary or appendix objects even after the main object stopped moving should keep moving. And overlapping means parts of the main object react with a delay and different speed from the main object and stay behind, like these samples. Appendix objects should keep moving after the main object stops and move at different times. This rule is also used for showing alive objects and objects that are not moving like clothes and hair. As you can see, this rule causes our animation to look more real and natural, so certainly use it in creating your animations. The next rule is the arc. Most movements in the real world follow a curve. If we want our animation to be natural and beautiful, we should follow this rule. This rule can be used for character parts and also for simple objects. 
As you can see in this example, the movements of the character's body parts follow the arts. You should obey this rule in head turning too. As you can see, if you don't follow this rule, how much our animation looks artificial and boring. But when the head animation is done with arcs, looks much better and attractive. This is an example of objects that are following the arcs. Arc rule is that in fast movements and machine movements, we should use the trailer pads. And in slower movements or normal movements, we should use more bent curves. As you can see in the live example, because this clip animation speed is normal, bent curves have been used. And in the right one, because it has fast speed, the straight paths have been used. And finally, if you're interested in learning all the rules of animation and their applications in motion graphics, as well as mastering the creation of beautiful animations in After Effects, I recommend watching this course. Thanks for watching, I'll see you in the next video.